This is a passage from my Dark Rules Light RPG war game, Investigating Censor, which is set amidst a campaign by oracular warrior monks to eliminate a sect of human sacrificing pirates. And I would like to tell you about their temples. So let's begin with the Winter Temple. Snowflakes thick as cotton balls whirl in the air. The cracked rock beneath the temple mouth is clad in ice and splash patterns. The pillars and crags off the coast are hemmed by the bones of arctic creatures killed by the cold and carried in on the white caps. The temple's interior walkway to the sacrificial cliff is slippery with ice. A shrill wind cuts at the cavern's mouth. It's a moaning, salivating gullet. A faceless priest, a man whose features have been stripped by winter months, appears in the cavern mouth. He's flanked by pirates in all covering white garments that are six inches thick. The priest is blind, his eyes dried into tiny piercing white orbs that hang in spacious sockets. Their uneven irises are pure black dots. The pirates bring forward a merchant's daughter in a blood-red gown, a prize for the salvation of kidnappers, and cast her into the wind. It carries into the frozen seawall several times before she lands in the bones and ice. Inside the temple, trees have been hacked down and dragged across the interior to rot as sacrilege against the soil in the place of stone and salt water. Watching the sacrifice from the darkness is a sea hermit whose eyes grow red and whose beard grows green with the wind of the sea. His nails are long, hard as iron, and razor sharp. He combs his ragged beard, lifts and drops his hair, dices fish and holds bits of flesh with the tips of his claws. The pirates at this temple are raked with long, five-fold scars all across their bodies. He never leaves the temple, unwilling to go into the open sky after spending his entire life at sea. He channels the fortune which is won by the protection priest. Deeper in the shrine, there's an even more beastly figure. He is a man in symbiosis with a polar shark, its white body split open and woven through him with pink coral, which transmit their blood and nervous tissue to one another in exchange for a portion of the principal. His face has disappeared within the beast's gullet, and his voice emerges from within, and he feeds on the slurry of gore that's made by the creature's thousand teeth when it finds or is given prey. He's armored in whalebone, and the shark's dry and reeking back is similarly clad in a spiderweb of bone. Its tail and its side fins have been cut away. The man devoured them, and the beast devoured parts of him, all as part of their dread pent. His arms are gauntleted in old and petrified barnacles. Their jagged tips are razor sharp, and after ablating into wounds, will produce ghastly infections. His living shark mantle is periodically reinvigorated by the burning of smelling salts that well from the sea foam after a sacrifice. His weapon is a two-handed marlin spike that was used to beat the brains out of seals before being turned on men.